classic right now. Let's go to Tim Munn for the starting lineup. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Pine Bluff Convention Center and the championship game of the sixth annual King Cotton Holiday Classic. Tonight's game will feature the number one ranked team in the nation, the St. Anthony Friars from Jersey City, New Jersey, and the three-time defending King Cotton champion and ranked number two nationally from Oakton, Virginia, the Flint Hill Prep Falcons. Now, introducing the starting lineup. First, for the visitors with a record of 6-0, the Friars of St. Anthony. A 6-7 junior forward, number 25, Sean Rooney. A 6-5 freshman forward, number 13, Roderick Rhodes. A 6-7 senior forward, number 21, Jerry Walker. A 6-3 senior guard, number 24, Terry Deheer. And a 6-1 senior guard, number 14, Bobby Hurley. The Friars are coached by Bob Hurley. Now for the home team, with a record of 10 wins and no losses, the Falcons of Flint Hill Prep. First, a 6'10 senior center, number 42, Frazier Johnson. At a guard, a 6'1 junior, number 22, Randolph Childress. At a forward, a 6'8 senior, number 34, George Lynch. Let's go, let's go. A 6'5 junior guard, number 43, Bobby Graves. And a 6'7 senior forward, number 44, Aaron Bain. The Falcons are coached by Stu Vetter. Your officials, Jim Lewis and Jerry Wood. 6-0 going into this ball game for St. Anthony's. How would you like to start the season in the Florida shootout against three undefeated teams they had to play to win that? Then Flynn Hill, of course, 10-0. They're three-time defending, defending champ here. They went over to Hawaii and played a great field over there. So high school basketball is just not the same. And you really can have a national championship because everybody travels now. They call it mythical national championship because there's really no tournament, but you know who is number one by the end of the year. And both these teams have been there. They're ready to tip it off. Tipped out of bounds, the big guy, Frazier Johnson, who's a bit of a surprise starter for us here. They used him coming off the bench last night. Well, they, the coaches all said he does play better coming off the bench. He gets too emotional early in the ballgame, but it's nice to have a 6'10", 6'7", 6'7", front line. They are big across the middle. The guy with the ball now is Bobby Hurley. Simply one of the best ball handers in high school basketball. And a great assist man, too, although Aaron Bain picked that one off, but it will still go out to St. Anthony. I think everyone in Pine Bluff would have had tears in their eyes tonight if these two teams hadn't played each other. They've been gearing up for it all week. No question. That's the here from the corner. Won't fall. Rebound comes down, and it's the big guy, Frazier Johnson, who handles it. Might add, John, everyone on the court, seniors, will be in Division I next year, and probably the juniors the year after. A little question about that. Lynch moves it into Johnson, who's double teamed, gets the shot off, Bain over the back. But coming away with it is Bobby Hurley. And he'll be exciting. He's a little nervous to start off this ball game, but that's where they want to get the ball. Bobby Hurley in the open court. Kenny Anderson's probably the only one that can do more in the United States. Barry here. Nice inside move and picks up the first two points of the game. 
T.J. Carlissimo of Seton Hall like that move. He's going to love it, getting him down there next year. This is Randolph Childress, who runs the point for Flint Hill. He's a junior, but very poor. Ball is stolen away by Jerry Walker. Whoa, get it out of here, this is Fort Flint. Early. That one might have been touched on the way down. There, no doubt it was goaltending, but uh, these officials are used to small college, <laughs> not big high school. They're not used to people being up there for that. We look at Bobby Hurley, the coach. George Lynch to the outside. That one is short, but Bain with a strong rebound, but too strong. Aaron Bain in traffic again. Roderick Rhodes just stuffed it, and that's a jump ball. And Roderick Rhodes is a ninth grader for our fans out there. He averaged 38 a game as a ninth grader, an eighth grader last year. And you'll see a great block here, but he hasn't been blocking out. There was a nice jump ball there, but Bain already has three offensive rebounds. Aaron Bain pushes it outside to Graves. Graves will take the shot. Scored 25 over in Hawaii and made two foul shots to win the tournament in overtime, so he can shoot. Childers tried to dish it off. The ball comes right back to him. Nice dish. Nice move to the hole by Fraser Johnson. 6'10 transfer student. It's like a Christmas present early. He's actually went to high school right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. A lot of the fans here are a little bit disappointed he didn't stick around. Right. He's originally from Little Rock. Then he went down to East St. Louis. He found out he had to sit out a year. Of course, great layup right there. And then he ended up at Flint Hill for one year now. Rooney was credited with the tap on the follow of the miss by Jerry Walker. Rooney's your blue-collar player out there. He's only taken three, uh, seven shots in the tournament, but he's really a knowledgeable junior. Well, we saw Coach Hurley at one point tell him, don't even think about shooting. <laughs> oh, one point. Nice shot. The foul is called as Bain took the nice speed inside. And tried to take it in. That's the matchup that the coach Hurley is feared the most. Here's Bain. Really, he started four years for Flint Hill. He was the most valuable player here last year. He got the ninth grader on his hip and moved to the basket. And that's, I think, the only matchup that they fear. St. Anthony's, the number one team in the nation. Aaron Bain misses the first one. Roderick Rose, as you said, he's a freshman, a ninth grader. We talked to coach Hurley. And he said, quite simple, i got to have him in there. He's one of my best athletes. Oh, he's a great, he's going to be a, a, probably he is the best ninth grader in the nation. Scored 11 points and eight rebounds in the semifinals. Our score is four to three. St. Anthony with the one point lead and Aaron Bain has called for the foul. Takes a lot of nerve to double team Bob Hurley at half court and but Flint Hill will do this to increase tempo, to take you out of your offense. They'll run into a half-court trap, and they half-court. And, of course, Hurley got it away to a very, very strong Jerry Walker. Clemson, Seton Hall. Later, we'll name the other 38 schools that are chasing him. Everyone is lined up and waiting. A lot of college coaches are here and have been here all week long to watch this tournament because where else can you see a group of talent like this gathered under one roof. And a lot of the Flint Hill players do not sign till the end of the season. Aaron Bain is unsigned. George Lynch, the man with the ball now, is unsigned. Children tries to work his way around Hurley. What ninth grader do you see overplay like that? Both of these teams basically are man-to-man. -man. But I think before the evening's over, a key will be who can play against the zone because both of them like to throw in the zone. Childress works it out to Graves. Aaron Bain on the wing, can't control it, and the ball is stolen away by Sneaky Quick, Roderick Rose. Let's see here, this is off the walker, turns around, won't fall, and a big rebound by Fraser Johnson. Fraser will do that, and he'll block shots. His offensive game is a little bit behind his defensive game. But he is a force in that middle, no question about it. Stolen away by Hurley. Hurley with Childers on a nice pass back to here, who slams it down. And 
De Heer is a great athlete, and he could play point guard anywhere. He's playing a number two guard on this ball club, but there's no doubt, as the fans just watched there, he's an athlete. Well, Bobby Hurley showed tremendous, tremendous vision. He had shoulders all over him, and most guys with a lot of inexperience would have just tried to take that right in. Nice move by Fraser Johnson. Coach Cheney from Temple Can't seems wait. to be in the lead for the young man that didn't play high school basketball last year. Now he was in D. St. Louis last year in transfer and couldn't play. Early shot is changed by Fraser Johnson. The bomb to Childress and won't get there. Childress has really developed into an outstanding point guard for Flint Hill. Junior. St. Anthony's leads it 7-5. to five. It's early on at the King Cotton Classic. Stay with us. Back with more in John River from Manhattan, Manhattan. 12 of the last 16 New Jersey State titles, six straight, but they do not have a gymnasium. As a matter of fact, they work out at a converted bingo hall. When they're not having bingo in there, that's where St. Anthony's goes to work out. A heater is used to hold the hoop down. Very, very makeshift, but obviously... The makeshift is making out just nicely. Thank you, Mike Wright. That was my first home, and I moved from a place that looked like that. <laughs> so it's, you don't need a Taj Mahal in this day and age to have a good basketball team. It looks like the place where Dr. Naismith invented the game. Yeah, well, it, there's a guy that's focused in. Uh, Jim doesn't mean anything to him. He, as you can see, he's intense on that bench. He won his 400th game the other night in the Florida shootout. And as long as Bob Hurley is the coach, it doesn't matter where they practice, they'll win basketball games. You watch him on the sidelines, it reminds you a lot of Bobby Knight, except he can't get up out of the chair because of that New Jersey rule. Right. He can't tonight, but he's, <laughs> he's used to sitting down. The only state, by the way, that still has that rule. De Heer nails it down from the corner. There's our first zone defense, and we said the team that can recognize how to play against the other one's zone right off the bat, because both teams will go into it just to test. Graves out of the top, works it on the wing to Chisholm. Aaron Bain with a bounce pass, turnaround shot by Johnson, won't go, and the rebound is called down by Sean Rooney. St. Anthony tries to work the break quickly. They get a nice bounce on the back. Hurley in the paint, puts the shot up and it goes. Tough to play a zone 2-3 against a penetrating guard like that. Nice move by Chisholm, or rather by Childress. Lynch's shot won't go. And again, bringing down the rebound is Sean Rooney. They're going to try a backdoor lob. I watched them in practice. It's called the head. And they're going to go for De Heer on that. There, there it is. is. Oh. Boy, you have a crystal ball there calling that one. Childers pulls up in the paint. And it looked like he had all the ball there at one point. And this is when you, you have two disciplined teams like this. When that coach calls out a play, they run it. And uh, if they were to watch shoot around, Coach Fetter, like I did, he would have saw that coming too. But both of these coaches, Coach Fetter, of course, I think is 306 wins and 53 losses. So both winning percentages are up in the high 80s. Great high school coaches. Roderick Rose was the one called for the foul. Well, I'm telling you, <laughs> it might be another one of those cases of the official not being used to the athletic ability. Timeout, Aaron Bates doesn't like what he sees. So they could travel. Uh, they play Tolentine of New York over in Fordham University. And they have really a national schedule, as does Flint. Well, there's little question that kids are trying to get the best competition they can with all the opportunities, the Division I and the like. You really certainly can't blame them for wanting to get the best competition and the best coaching. Braves will inbound the ball now. Lobs it over the top and over the back, but it goes all the way back. And you can do that from an inbound pass. The inbound. Children with some quick moves, but from behind, it's early who steals it away. He tries to dish it out on the wing to the hair, but it's tipped away. Probably kept the ball a, a dribble too much. 
And his father will tell him about that. His father is very hard on his plain son. He makes sure he's tougher on him than anybody else on the team. So when he yells at anybody else, they know it's not favoritism. Early parts of the signal. This is off to Tahir. Tahir works the baseline. Standing right there in front of him is the big guy, Fraser Johnson. And I think they have the reps in a quandary now, not knowing whether they should call it. They're playing above the basket. They have to adjust. Or rather, George Lynch won't allow the inbound pass to Sean Rooney. That's a Division I front line. Frazier at 6'10", Bain and Lynch at 6'7". Nice pass into Ortiz. And Ortiz in the ball game for the ninth grader, and uh, he has been starting yeah. all the year. Ortiz was the starter, but as we told you, Roderick Rhodes is a better athlete, but Ortiz probably a little more polished at this point. Aaron Bain pulls up and hits the shot. And Rooney is going to have a tough time defending Bain. Bain likes to go one-on-one -on -one from the top, and he averages 20 a game on a team that's very unselfish with their shots. Just about a minute left in the first quarter, and St. Anthony leads it 13 to 7. That one gets away, and it's a turnover. Flint Hill will come up with the ball. You look at Coach Hurley. He's a vocal guy. I asked him if you have to have his, his pipe checked after every game. He's devised hand signals to save his voice, but I don't think he uses them that much. Lynch with a nice pass to Bain, pulls up in the paint, and does get the shot to fall. When Bain scores, Flynn Hill usually wins, so Coach Hurley is going to have to find some way to combat that. Four years of starter here. He was the MVP of the King Cotton Classic last year. And Flynn Hill won it for the third year in a row. And this is not unusual for either one of these teams. They'll go for the last shot. And when you spread out too much, they get a good shot. We have a correction that Jose Ramos of Miami Senior was the MVP, but it was a member of the team, a member of the all-tournament team was Aaron Bain, as he has been last year. A lot of young men that play in this tournament, we have a few of them that we will highlight later on, came from this tournament and really are doing well in college basketball. Frazier Johnson tries to the turnaround, but he had bodies all over him, and wide open is Hurley with the shot at the buzzer, but it won't go at the end of one quarter. St. Anthony leads it 15 to 9 over Flint Hill. Stay with us, there's more to come. We still have three quarters left. Number one, he wanted to meet number two. What about January 20th, 1968, when number one, Lou L. Cinder's UCLA Bruins went up against number two, Elvin Hayes and the Houston Cougars in the Astrodome, 52,000 plus. We're on hand to watch Hayes and the Cougars upset UCLA. It was avenged later in the tournament, but that number one against number two, something like we're seeing right here on the high school level. Our number one against number two is St. Anthony. They're number one, the Friars. Undefeated against Flint Hill. They're number two and undefeated as well. And St. Anthony has the 15-9 lead. And Bobby Hurley has the ball. Works around Childress. Childress gets his hand on the ball, but Ortiz is there to pull it down. He lets another shot go, does Hurley. That one won't fall as well. But this time it's... Jerry Walker, who comes up and turns around and hits the shot. Too many second chances. And Flynn Hill does not do that. They do not let people beat him off the backboard. So that is uh, St. Anthony shows you how powerful they are. Fraser Johnson can't get his hands on the ball. He loses it in another turnover. Right now, I'm wondering if how they're feeling in Chicago with Simeon, the uh, undefeated powerhouse there. Christ the King in New York is probably saying we could beat these two teams. Cooley in Detroit, South Bend, St. Joe, they're all undefeated and in the top ten in the United States. But right now, these are the two best in the U.S. 
Clint Hill has turned the ball over six times as of now. Just four for St. Anthony. Nice little turnaround shot by Jerry Walker. He's a blue-collar player. He doesn't do anything exceptional, but he never does anything wrong either. A technical to the bench of St. Anthony. Looked like one of the assistant coaches. Well, that's three times now that we've had the guard for Flynn Hill drag the foot, and uh, I thought Childress got away with it twice before, and I thought he dragged it right there also, and and we didn't see the coach jump up, but I think <laughs> he might have said something, and the referee was standing right in front of him. Standing right there, although they, they all raised their arms like they were innocent, but who's gonna plead guilty at that point? Aaron Bain will take the shot. St. Anthony not playing exceptionally well in their 10 up. You know, the uh, Miami senior has a great Doug Edwards, and when they were in the Florida shootout, this team beat them by 13 points. Of course, Miami senior, I'd like their frequent flyer. Uh, they were down in Cincinnati, they were in St. Louis. Tonight, they're in Raleigh, North Carolina, playing Louisville. Ballard. We talked about it before. High school game has changed so much. These teams travel just about as much as the college teams do. Lynch has been a little bit quiet. Yes, that's the disappointment so far. Braves with it. Wants to release it. Finally does the main. I don't think these teams, either one of them, give up easy baskets. Both very good defensively. Lynch has it at the top of the key. Has it poked loose, and it goes right into the hands of Sean Rooney. Very unusual for Lynch. They were running the flex offense, and he's nervous out there tonight. The big lights are shining. Hurley from the baseline over top of his man and just knocks it down. Childress blocked the last one. Didn't bother Hurley at all. He came back and just put it right in the face. Mike Krzyzewski could not wait for Bobby Hurley to get down there. Yes, him and McCafferty will be a great back force for Duke in the years to come. Jerry Walker reaches in on George Lynch and gets called for the foul. A lot of college coaches here after uh, Aaron Bain also. I know uh, West Virginia was here and uh, North Carolina. Assistant coach was here the other night. Phil Ford. It's very unusual to have players of that caliber, and that's a three-point attempt by Bain, that are still unsigned, who haven't signed in the early signing period. I think they're looking at Lynch a little bit more than Bain. Three-pointer by Bobby Hurley. I got the inside tip on, of course, Bain. His girlfriend goes to UCLA, so we can maybe know where he's going. Glenn Hill wants a timeout. They're down by 14. 39 left in the half. Stay with us. We'll be back. Bobby Hurley coming down. If you back off him, he'll take the three-pointer. He's got seven points tonight and only one assist. Unusual for him. But if you go out on him, that's John when he goes around you. either dumps it off. And that's what makes a great guard can penetrate, can shoot the outside shot, and picks the right time to do it. And he really is a good decision maker. And he's one of those players that is sneaky quick, too. You look at him and you say, wait a second, I can beat that guy. Yes. And then his hands grab the ball away. Yeah, a little quicker than Corciani of North Carolina State. He's in the mold of uh, Chris Jackson of LSU and, uh, of course, Anderson. There's a quite, that's a compliment there. Graves took steps, and the referee was right in front of Coach Hurley, and he got the technical last time. And maybe it did some good because the same official called the steps that they wanted. Bobby Hurley works his way around the pick and along the baseline. Dishes it off to Walker with a strong move. And he's fouled by George Lynch. And they're having trouble. I thought DeHere would be the person that Flynn Hill would have the most trouble with. I thought Childress would be able to stop Hurley. As you can see, great penetrator. Look at him looking. He sees the whole court right there. He knows what he's going to do with the basketball. And it's really difficult to defense that. And this Flynn Hill team is a great weak side help team. Jerry Walker is a force. He comes to play every day. He's just one of these hard-nosed kids. And that's why there's so many schools lined up to get him. 
in Hawaii, Flynn Hill was down 14 points in the first quarter to Mouth Wilson, and they still won the game. Aaron Bain with the two from the top of the key. And that's his favorite spot. That's the third time tonight. They need to do that a little bit more and also get Lynch involved in this offense. They've got to get the ball inside to him. Aaron Bain now has eight points in the game. But as you say, George Lynch has been almost silent. Not this time for Hurley, and it looks like it may have gotten Bain for reaching over the back of Walker, and that's what it is. They can't afford to get him in any kind of foul trouble. Well, it, it, it's key. Both teams go about seven deep. And if anybody would get into foul trouble in the first half, that would really hurt the scheme of things on the, both teams. Into the game now for St. Anthony, number six, Harris. He's a five foot 11 inch senior guard, and they go with a three guard offense because Tahir and Hurley are still in there. Roderick Rhodes, the ninth grader, a little nervous, and they haven't put him back in the ball game. Hurley works his man. Let's shot go up one-handed. Won't fall, but he follows it. A nice block there by Gray. Scooter Bertino is number 11 in the game for Flint Hill. Is that the three-pointer? And this is their normal starting lineup. They a little shorter with this lineup in, but have a better ball movement. Walker trying to work his way along the baseline on Bain. Does get the shot. A nice move and a nice shot. Usually in high school, you have one weapon, maybe two. Both of these teams can go three and four different weapons. Three-point attempt by Graves is short. And the rebound is hauled down by Bobby Hurley. And he's starting to really get the gleam in his eye, Hurley. He, he's missed a couple of shots, but you can see he's getting into this ball game. And that's why you do not want to get behind St. Anthony's. It's because of Bob Hurley who really gets pumped up and emotionally gets into the game. Bobby Graves picks up his first personal foul. Team fouls are still below the limit. The limit is five in high school. Wide open is Hurley. That one is long. Ball comes right back out. Hurley gets another shot at it. That one is short. Not bashful. <laughs> Give me the ball, I'll put it up. Gray pushes it into Lynch. Lynch over top. Wolf drop for him. Follow. It's Bain who comes up as a jump ball as Bain and Walker both came up with it. And no matter how Lynch looks now, he is the guy that can really bring him back, and they have to keep going into him. So uh, I don't think they can win without a good ball game from George Lynch. Harris on him, takes it right down the middle, pitches it off to Aaron Bain, who goes up for the big slam. There's a lot of college coaches hoping his girl transfers somewhere <laughs> else. Now, Jim Herrick, he had a player in the first game, Zan Mason, that yeah. really had, had a great tournament here. The here with a little spin move in the paint, gets himself open, and lets yeah. the shot go. And North Carolina came in a little late on Dahir, and he had already decided to go to Seton Hall, so that's the quality that that young man has. Lynch can't hang on to the pass coming in from Bertino, and it's turned over. And I think that's why they did use bring Bertino into the ball game, so they could maybe get the ball into Lynch a little better. 30 to 17, St. Anthony with a big 13-point lead, two minutes, 20 seconds left. In the first half, and a nice little running one-hander by Dahir in the paint. Outstanding, penetrating guard. Bertino. Gray to Bertino again. They look for Lynch, but he just can't find his way free. And let's give a little credit to Jerry Walker. You know, when we're talking about Lynch isn't in the ball game, there's a great defensive player Jerry Walker and he has been in his career. Coach Stuart Vetter looking on wondering what's going wrong here early. His team down by 15 late in the first half. I think everybody is shocked here in Pine Bluff. Walker took steps as he tried to put it down on the baseline. But here has 10 points in the game. Very difficult. It's 
I thought going in it would be the backcourt of St. Anthony's against the front court. And so far, only Bain has come alive for Flint Hill in the front court. Lynch with a nice pass to Bain. Does get it up. This game will be like a chess match. Both of these coaches can do a lot of different things. They'll trap in defenses. Right now, they're going straight man to man. But in the second half, I think we'll see a little 1-3-1 one, one zone. They'll throw some different things in. Aaron Bain now with 12 points. But the foul is called on Childress. As Bobby Hurley tried to work his way around the pick, Childress was trying to fight his way around it. And for those St. Anthony opponents in the future, there's another Hurley coming, the ninth. Danny Hurley in the ninth grade. Watch how the St. Anthony's team knows exactly what they want to do on this play. Down the baseline, and you can bet Hurley knew where everyone on the court was on the play. We watched Bobby Hurley at the free throw line. You were talking about his younger brother, Danny Hurley, who's actually on the team. He's sitting out right now. He's got problems with his left wrist, the broken left wrist or such, but they say it's his team. When Bobby graduates, it's his team. And that was, they turned it over four years ago as a freshman. How big was he? Five, five, one, and yeah. about 115 pounds, five, four, maybe. As a ninth grader, and he was the, I think, the third leading scorer on the team. Bertino from the corner just buries it. Now that's a, that's a bonus. And St. Anthony, they weren't, they didn't think Bertino would shoot that shot in a big game like this. So that's a real plus for Flint Hill. When we watched him in the semifinals, he doesn't shoot it that much, but when he does, he's got a real nice touch on the ball. Turnover, and as Bertino comes up with it, he's really sparked him since coming into the lineup. Sometimes, I thought it might be Graves tonight would be the spark, unknown spark. Childress just doesn't hang on to the ball. We have 32 seconds left in St. Anthony. Leads it 34 to 22. And there was a little half-court trap thrown in right at the right time. These clubs will go in and out of things and you won't even know it as a spectator. But as a coach, your team really has to be focused in when you're playing either one of these teams. Time is running down. St. Anthony might hold it for the last shot. Remember, there's no shot clock here along the baseline. So oh, they didn't want that. He goes up and he's brought right down Sean Rooney. And as you said earlier, John, <laughs> we watched in the shoot-around today, and Sean Rooney took an open eight-footer in the shoot-around, and Coach Hurley said, now that's not your shot. <laughs> so if an open eight-footer is it, I don't know if he's allowed to shoot. Well, that certainly is it. The Flint Hill will have one last chance to pull at least two points closer, possibly three. Look at the overplay defense here. Outstanding. Childers for the three, and it's an air ball, and the half ends with St. Anthony leading it by 12. 34 to 22 as we watch Bobby Hurley talk to his young junior Sean Rooney saying, uh-uh, not with 17 seconds left. You do not take that shot. Stay with us. There's more to come in just a moment. We're at halftime and number one St. Anthony, the front. It's tip-off time for the 1988-89 high school basketball season, a season that will be known as the year of the guard. The scramble for the top talent in America began November 9th, the first day seniors could sign letters of intent with colleges. You'll find many of this year's top seniors in the backcourt, those guys who quarterback the offense, who make the unbelievable passes and launch gravity-defying flights to the rim. At the head of the class of 89 is guard Kenny Anderson from Archbishop Malloy High School in Queens, New York. He's considered the best high school player in America, and he's been praised as the best point guard since he was a sophomore. They got me right now. They got me rated number one in the country. I, and when I step out on the court, I have to live up to that. And the players, you know, they don't make it, you know, easy on me. They, they you know, try to work hard on me and make everything hard. His mind is a basketball computer that makes instantaneous reads to the floor. His hands are magnets that draw the ball to himself. He does anything he wants to offensively. He scores at will. He penetrates at will. He just has a great feel for the game. Kenny, nicknamed Chib, is six foot two, 160 pounds. He averages 25 points a game and has led Malloy into postseason action since his freshman year. The next best guard in America is built like he should be playing a different position. Jimmy Jackson of Toledo's McComber Whitney has the bulk of a forward, but his ball handling skills make him perfect in the backcourt. He's a bodyguard, a six, five and a half, 220 pound bodyguard with excellent skills with the ball for a guy his size. 
Jimmy is contributing an average of 26 points a game, and he knows what to do with the ball in pressure situations. So I got to perform up to my ability and stop trying to make all the expectations of players the best as I can. So if I do that, I'll be satisfied with myself. Another of America's top guards isn't even thinking about basketball yet. Sean Golden of Greer, South Carolina, quarterbacked his school's football team. On the hardwood, Sean's known as a leader and a consistent player, one who'll quietly pop in an average 21 points a game before the opponents know what's hit him. With his father, Louie, as coach, Sean has led Greer to a state championship two years in a row. At St. Anthony High in Jersey City, New Jersey, Bobby Hurley is another coach's son, quietly leading his team to titles. At only 5'11", Bobby is one of America's best pure point guards. He can penetrate a tough defense and find the open man in traffic. One of his big goals this season is a national championship for St. Anthony's. We want to try and go out every game and play the best of our ability. And if we lose one or two games, as long as we know that we tried our best and we played our best. Bobby averages 20 points a game and shoots better than 50% from three-point range. Central High School in Peoria, Illinois has a lethal one-two punch in its backcourt. Chris Reynolds is a workhorse on defense. He's an exceptional ball handler and passer, as well as being a team leader. Chris likes to find the shooting half of the two, Mike Hughes, a 6'6 guard who also enjoys the physical small forward position. Mike likes rebounding, pulling down better than six balls a game. Central was nationally ranked last year, and this season they're hungry to play the best Chicago area schools. I want to play Chicago team. I have our high expectations for our team. I feel we can go all the way. There's no reason why we can't. Two states famous for high school basketball are boasting blue chip guards this season. In Louisville, Kentucky, Allen Houston led Ballard High to a state title. Opponents have to contain Allen as both a playmaking point guard and as a shooting wing guard who averages 21 a game. He passes the ball, plays within the team concept, and with a new three-point arc, he can drill the three. Allen picked up a lot of the fundamentals from his father, Wade, an assistant coach at the University of Louisville. Across the river in Indiana, guard Calvert Chaney has been pumping in over 20 points a game, a lot of it from three-point range. He's got a soft left-handed shot. Calvert put his speed and leaping abilities to good use as a hurdle finalist in last year's state track meet. Not all of the stars of the class of 89 are in the backcourt. Some of the top seniors are standouts at the small forward position. In Falls Church, Virginia, 6'7", Aaron Bain will again be an intimidating scoring threat for Flint Hill Academy. Aaron is confident underneath the backboard, but he can also cruise the floor. The good point about my game is I can play outside and go inside, too. And if I only go to a big, big college like I like to, that's, you know, that's going to be one thing I'm going to have to do to become a good player. Also from the greater Washington, D.C. area is 6'7 forward Michael Tate of Oxen Hill, Maryland High. He punishes opponents for an average 30 points a game, but Michael can also dominate a game with his ball handling. The best big man in New York this year may well be 6'8 Daryl Barnes of Franklin Lane High in Brooklyn. People who know Daryl call him a gentle giant. This will only be his second season playing in the Big Apple, where the action can get a lot more rugged than his former home in Mississippi. Daryl is accurate from the field, and his leaping ability allowed him to block 17 shots in one game last year. One of the nation's best front court men is also exciting to watch. Lawrence Funderburk of Whirling High in Columbus expects another year of 28-point scoring assaults on opponents, including bombs from 18 feet away. He shoots three-pointers as effortlessly as any guard out here. He can be a great player. Outside of any of the rising seniors, other than Kenny Anderson, he has the potential, I think, to be uh, the finest player. I like open floor. I like to shoot outside, and, uh, dribble and pass, you know, see a man over there. At six foot seven, Lawrence is only 170 pounds, but he's tough enough under the boards to get an average 14 rebounds a game. He had a four-minute streak there, and uh, Flynn Hill stopped him. But as soon as they stopped him, Hurley had a couple three-pointers. He has nine. They got the ball inside to Walker then for nine points. Ortiz came off the bench and had four. So real balance scoring. Yeah, balance is the key, and for Flynn Hill, just the opposite. There is no balance. Right. Bain has 12, and it should be Lynch. And you see Lynch with zero. 
he is the whole key. And believe me, fans, he is a ball player. You know, the, the rest of the tournament, uh, he's averaged 20 a game and 10 rebounds a game. And uh, he's been through this all. And he just, maybe it's uh, uh, the fact that Walker's doing such a great job on him that uh, he's not scoring. Well, you have to give Walker some credit. He is a tenacious defender. That's one of the things a lot of the college coaches like about him. We're underway in the second half. Penetrating and dishing off a nice dish to Roderick Rose. And guess who dished it off? Bobby Hurley. And now he's, uh, he's in his lab now. He's taking Childress apart. Graves looking for an open man. It's Lynch. The top of the key pulls up, lets it go, and that's not even close. No, and that's not his shot. Tries to work the baseline, finds Aaron Bain. Childress changes hands, won't get it to fall. Lynch over the top, picks it. Turns around, that won't go. Frazier Johnson bangs it off the glass. And when you have Lynch shooting on one side, that means you have a 6'10 and a 6'7 weak side rebounders in Bain and Frazier Johnson. That's a blocking foul called against Bobby Graves as he tried to cut his way in front of Terry DeHere. And, of course, uh, Graves is not uh, kind of the silent guy that you never notice, and he always ends up with 13, 14 points. He hasn't been able to get started tonight either. No, he is a good shooter, and in the games that we saw in the semifinals, they were breaking him free as well from the pack. Whenever the shot would go up and one of his teammates would go for the rebound, he'd break free down the other end. Hurley pulls up. Not this time. Turn around by Walker with one hand. Reaching over the back was George Lynch. Walker, 6'7". Rooney, 6'7". And, uh, of course, Rhodes, 6'6". Six, six. And uh, Bain helped out in the middle there. And there's Walker keeping the ball alive. Look at Rooney getting inside position on Lynch. Lynch pushing off there. Lynch is just, uh, you know, he's a great defensive rebounder, and it, today he's just standing. He's not quick to the ball. here feeds it in for Walker, but he can't get a handle on it. It goes out of bounds, and it's turned over. And when you're behind a team like St. Anthony, you're afraid to take any chances with traps or zones, so you have to almost play them straight man-to-man. Chill just out the top to Lynch. Lobs it over to Bain. Swapped out of his hands by Roderick Rose, the freshman. Everybody in Pine Bluff had a different idea of how this game was going to be. That's how close and how good they've looked the rest of the week, both teams. should remind everyone here that St. Anthony is also trying to snap a three-year winning streak. The lob, and finally George Lynch breaks the goose egg, but it takes the high percentage shot to get it. And I think Coach should be really congratulated for that. They want to get Lynch into the ballgame. And sometimes that's the type of thing it takes to get you going. Traveling, rather than make the call on whether it was a block or a charge, will the say take steps. Well, it could have been a lot of things. For the travel, it wasn't. <laughs> but I think that probably keeps everyone happy. It was the ninth grader that was out of control. So I, I don't think the coach really, uh, Hurley, minds that too much. Randolph Childress loses the handle on it. Hurley is all over him, so it's a lob it up for Lynch. And they called Jerry Walker. They both went up for the ball. They say that Lynch was the one in the better position. And as smart as Hurley is on offense, it's not Hurley day, but you notice once he had Childress pinned in the corner, he cut off the passing lane and played good defense with his feet. So uh, uh, coach's son usually do that. Lynn Hill trying to fight their way back into this one and defend their championship looking for their fourth in a row. Aaron Bain won't get that one to fall. And here come the Friars again. Looking for an opening is Curley. He's fouled and the shot fall. And the only thing he had in his mind, John, was to draw the foul. And he was smart enough to make sure the ball had a chance to go in. Outstanding. Reverse dribble. Goes in. Nice change of pace here. He has him off balance. Nice pump fake. And that's why he'll be a great 
guard next year. We disagree on that. I think he'll <laughs> step right into the Duke starting lineup. We like him to step in. No question that Mike Krzyzewski doesn't mind starting freshman. He did it with Tommy Amaker down there, who got plenty of playing time. And with Quinn Snyder graduating, Bobby Hurley will be in a position to try and step right in. He's a player. Lynch with a couple of moves in the paint, but it's blocked by Walker. Walker did not go for the pump fake. He is a clinic in defense. He doesn't have the quickest feet in the world, but he's great anticipation, and he knows what the offensive man wants to do. A little press, and Hurley breaks it like it's not even there. Oh, Frazier Johnson says, uh-uh, little guy. And back comes the other way as Lynch throws it up, and he's called for a charge. And I think we had a foul on both ends of the court, and I'm not sure if it was called the right way on either end. Take a look at this one again. Bobby Hurley tries to take this one into the hall, and Frazier Johnson, 6'10", going against the guy. They say is six foot. Looks almost like 5'11". He says, forget it. <laughs> and he'll probably get, would look real well in the Temple middle on that kind of block. Ooh, Rick Rose tries to take it in. He, oh! Frazier Johnson took him down hard, and the young ninth grader comes up swinging. And we have to look at the replay because I think the ninth grader thinks he swung at his head instead of the ball. And he really, uh, and he did get hit in the head. So we're going to have to see what the referees are talking this over. And this could be crucial because Rose right now is doing a good job on Bain defensively. And they're talking over whether to throw out Rose right now. They're shaking hands, making up. And I Let's think that will have an effect on the referees at this point. And the crowd responds to that. That's good to see. But if it's a deliberate, they're going to have to throw him out. So right now they've talked it over. I, that doesn't look deliberate to me. No. That does. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, we have to call something on Rhodes, the ninth grader. And it can't just be a foul. It has to be something else. That was, uh, it wasn't exactly Mike Tyson. But a ninth grader, he hasn't had time to work on all his moves. <laughs> well, he's no question that Frazier Johnson fouled him hard. He wasn't going to allow him to score, no question. But I don't think that he was. Well, he got away with one with Hurley. And yeah. he said, now, this is one way to get us back in the ballgame. And once again, the front line of Flint Hill, if you've joined us late, 6'10, 6'7, 6'7. With good movement. With two shot fouls. And he shoots fouls very well. As we said, he averaged 38 a game last year in the eighth grade, playing on a ninth grade junior high team. He shot 70% from the foul line. This is the second one, and a big rebound by Frazier Johnson. Frazier might be the spark they need on defense. Jason Wallace is into the game now for Flint Hill. He's number five with the ball. Stripped away by Walker, and they call Walker for the foul. Great defense. Great. <laughs> and we did have, I think he went over his back. 40 to 26 is the score. St. Anthony still hanging on to that 14-point lead as we have number one against number two. 4.30 left in the third quarter. Stay with us. Back with more in a moment. Just him after all the... Oh, little question. A little question as they talked about that. George Lynch is what we talked about in the first half, and he had a big goose egg on the board. Here's how they got him loose. Stu Fetter, of course, wants to get him into the action. They ran a nice out-of-bounds play against the zone, and they threw the alley-oop. Here it is. They'll pick off the Jerry Walker, and he's been tough to get rid of today, but it still hasn't gotten Lynch into that offense. And they'd like to post him down, I'm sure, underneath and getting the ball there, but Walker plays such great defense on the side, uh, they haven't been able to get the lob pass because of the weak side help. 40 to 26, the Flint Hill hasn't been successful in chipping away at this lead at all. Great defense by St. Anthony. Lynch gets his man in the air, then goes along the baseline, sends it up, but it's short. When they won't fall, they just will not fall. And I don't think they're going to be able to dominate the basket on the rebounds if they don't fall. And the front line of Chanson is doing a great job rebounding, boxing out. Nice over-the-shoulder pass by Hurley as he got into the walker, but he was covered. 
Rogers Rhodes with a nice keep. Get it out of here. George Lynch gets up and knocks that one away as Sean Rooney tried to take the shot. Well, he averages three block shots, 10 rebounds, and 19 points. So, you know, Lynch, George, uh, and you can see nice pass by a ninth grader there to Rooney. Rooney's first shot of the game, and it'll probably be his last. <laughs> Nice feed by Hurley, stripped away by Childress. Clint Hill still hasn't found the right combination to score in this ballgame. They, they're not sure what to do. Rooney making a liar out of you, sends the bomb away, but it's short. I'm glad he took that shot. Graves tries to get into the bane, comes right back to him. He's got it short, and there... Dipping it in is the great athletic ability of George Lynch. It's number one versus number two. He wants to get into the game now. Last week in Florida, it was one and two. Miami Senior went down by 13 points to the St. Anthony team. There may not be a two in the nation. <laughs> Maybe one and then three. That might the way St. Anthony plays this year, they've been so powerful. Well, the, the good teams in the nation really, it, it just, uh, it boggles my mind. So when I played and when I coached in high school, uh, I played in Detroit and they wouldn't let us out of the city to play a, <laughs> a, a suburban team. And now they go all over uh, South Bend, St. Joe. They're playing in two tournaments at the same time in Indiana. They could play five games in three days. So that's two double headers. But I think maybe that's carrying them a little too far. Hyattsville, Maryland has already been in two classics. Unlike the colleges, they are classics. They get good teams. They go out looking. In fact, Pat Anderson, Travis Creed here, really, in six years, this is a, probably the best turn in the high school tournament in the nation. Frazier Johnson comes down with the rebound off the miss by Walker. Flynn Hill wants to run. Bain is too hard, tipped it, can't get it to go. And maybe they should run a lot more. That might be the only way to get some points on the board in a hurry. I think their half-court offense has really left them with Lynch. So now I think they should try to you know, increase tempo by uh, changing the defense. Maybe a half-court trap, which they used last ball game very well. Early along the baseline, pinned up against the glass by Frazier Johnson, but his second attempt he comes down with a big hack. And Hurley once again. The only thing he was looking for in there was the foul over a 6'10 and a 6'7 and he, he accomplished it. Remember now, the fans watching the game, this was early in the high school season. Especially for St. Anthony because they can't start till after Thanksgiving. Right, and they haven't had a lot of time to put this ball club together. Of course, last year they were 29-1. And won their 8,000th, I think, in a row the <laughs> Class B Catholic Championship in New Jersey. This year, they're playing a lot more New York teams. Tolentine over at Fordham. So they dropped out of their league just to, and that shows you what, you know, teams are thinking about in this day and age in high school basketball. Cincinnati Woodward has played uh, all over the United States with uh, the state champs of Ohio. Childress with a double dribble. They had an invitational in Cincinnati, drew 21,000 fans in a seven-game tournament. There's Susie Ramirez on the bench of Flint Hill. She's a, a woman assistant coach. She wants to go on and coach a, a boys' team in high school. Walker with a double pump. Throws it off the glass. And now uh, Flint Hill not looking like the team that they are. George Lynch on the wing, wants to work the baseline, loses control of the ball. Bertino with a nice pass into Johnson, too strong off the glass, but he's fouled. And there are women coaches in men's high school basketball. I think there's two in Washington, D.C., one in New York, one out in California. She's in charge of the weight program and also academics. So John Thompson's not the only one. No, Mary Penland at Georgetown is not the only one. <laughs> nice little motion there for a 6'10 guy. Look at the body there, John. Could you use him as your uh, postman? 
Yeah, that's a, uh, that could be an Illinois or an Iowa Big Ten type player. Oh, they would love him down there. Lou oh, Henson would love to get him with Dr. Tom Davis. Dr. Tom could have used him over in Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Cal Riverside. And how about Michigan? He won't even mention that loss. Moves into the ski roll in Alaska Anchors. 44 to 30, it's still 14 points. Lynch wanted to move it into Bain, now he wants to move it. Lobs it over the top to Bain, but Rose with the athletic move gets in there, but he fouls as well. But a great weak side help for a ninth grader, how he was playing Bain inside, uh, moving his feet when the lob pass came, and you'll see he's fronting the defensive uh, offensive man now. Now he moves his feet, he gets around on the weak side to take away the baseline. Great, you know, uh, and it, that shows you the discipline that these teams have, not only on offense, but defense. Stolen away by Roderick Rhodes as he grabs the inbound back. Great quickness. And we're going to see him get into the ballgame offensively very soon. Walker is open on the baseline, and he bangs that one down. And that's why they're number one in the nation. Rutino. With the here all over him, loses it, another turnover. Showtime. Behind the back to the here, pinned up by George Lynch. Walker gets the rebound, it's short. Again, follows and gets it to fall. Oh, uh, Jerry Walker's gonna make a good one in Division One. Who's gonna get him, though? <laughs> nice, strong move in the paint there by Frazier Johnson. A lot of these players from Flint Hill haven't decided yet, three frontline players, where they're going to go to school, and a lot of schools involved. I think uh, Bain has only taken a trip to Virginia Tech so far. Strong rebound by Walker, and he turns around. 50 to 32 is the lead. St. Anthony has it up to 18. We're at the end of the third quarter, the fourth quarter coming away in just a moment. And Flint Hill has some work the fourth quarter. And it's been an interesting game, Mike Rice, but obviously, as you look at the storyline here, Hurley and Walker have been doing the job, the two guys we talked about in the open. Well, Walker and Lynch, that's the whole story of the game. Walker not only has stopped Lynch, he scored 17 points and has seven rebounds. So the battle of the inside has been won. As we said at the start of the ball game, Walker had to do the job, and he did. Bain has 12 points, and you might mention that he hasn't gotten too many in this second half on the ninth grader road. Lynch just two of 12 from the field in this game for four points. Bertino has the ball, number 11 for Swint Hill. As they try and fight their way back into this one, they have a little less than eight minutes now to make it up. That's a three-point attempt by Childress and a strong rebound by Terry here. He's, uh, he can do everything. He's a two-guard, a one-guard, a small forward. He rebounds well. Great quick hit. Keaton Hall is a nice ball player. Clint Hill, much more aggressive now on defense in their overplay. They're going to try to create some tempo so they can run the ball a little bit more. Oh, nice cut to the basket by the freshman. But Lynch is in his face, and Rhodes can't get the shot off. Bain with the bounce pass. Lynch is too strong. And that's not him. He is just not playing his game. And it's tough when you start off slowly in a big game to get your momentum going again. Lynch now 2 of 13 from the floor. And as you say, that is not George Lynch. Stolen away by Graves. Lobs it ahead for Childress. He loses the handle. And DeHere is there to grab the loose ball. And he'll run the point which he does very well. Great ball. It's like having two point guards right there. Nice move. Pulls up and bangs it down. Bobby Hurley. You know, as soon as you think he goes all left, a right-hander going all left, then he goes back to the right side. So he doesn't just go left. He goes both ways. Aaron Bain. Bertino tries to work it. <laughs> nice little touch off the glass. Another bonus. That's the second basket from Latino. One thing the tournament missed, John, this year was Lawrence Funderburg. The, yeah. Probably the number three player in the United States was sent home from the tournament by Columbus Whirly, the defending state champs in Ohio. 
and the fans really missed out on a great player and uh, uh, Lawrence has had his problems this year with a number of things he was named in the indictment of the University of Kentucky some of their wrongdoings he missed some school at Worley and now sent home from the tournament and he's one of the most recruited players in the United States with North Carolina and Kentucky and uh, you can go on and on with that young man a great player but uh, probably has to get things together a little bit more well perhaps some of the press clippings and such has gone to his head a little bit but there's no question he's a great student a great ball player and he's going to be a good one for they say indiana ohio state or north carolina is still in the running there right bobby knight's been down of course uh, gary williams uh, hasn't let too much get out of the state of ohio tread lee and eli brewster last year they're uh, doing a good job uh, for the buckeyes 54 to 34 it's now a 20 point game george lynch on the baseline turns around that is short followed by bain it looks like they get rose for a foul and as we said earlier uh you don't want to be 20 behind anthony because as soon as you start overplaying and going and pressing uh, that's when hurley and the here start going back door and uh, hurley would love to meet a press right now he'd i think light up the convention center here in Pine Bluff. You watch Aaron Bain go to the line. For those who might be wondering about Flint Hill being down by 20, this is a good team. They beat Worley by by nine in a hard fought game, 55-46, and then blew out Westchester of Los Angeles. That's the team that Zan Mason plays on is going to UCLA. A very good team. Just blew them out by 20 points. Well the there's Aaron Bain. 12 first half points, and as we said, that's his first points of the second half. So not only have they stopped Lynch, now they've stopped Bain. And if you stop those two, you are going to win. There's no question about it. They average 40 points and 20 rebounds between them up to this point in the season. Number three, Mark Harris is into the game once again for St. Anthony. Turn around to here. Too strong. Loose ball. And Harris comes up with it. Quick hands by Worley. Dishes it off to Harris. Oh, missing the easy layup there with Sean Rooney. And it's a jump ball. Just remind everybody that Scholastic Sports America comes your way every week here on ESPN. The only national television show devoted solely to the achievements of outstanding high school athletes hosted by Charlene Hawks. And you won't want to miss it. This is where you feature some of these great players here. And I give even heard about ESPN it. credit, Scholastic Sports, along with USA. Those are the two medias that have brought, really, high school basketball and high school football to the forefront in the United States. It's been well worth it. You look at some of these athletes out here. Unheard of to have two teams playing in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, from all over the United States coming to a tournament really turning the fans on early is so talented what a dish and a pass off the walker and he can turn that into a three-point play and early loves pressure defense the more you come out on him the more he penetrates and like kenny anderson he can get inside and he knows what to do with the ball once he's inside there's a nice little reverse dribble another reverse dribble he's waiting for the defensive man to make his move bain finally made his move and boom and he knew it exactly what he wanted to do on those reverse dribbles. Walker trying to turn it into a three-point play, misses it, Lynch hauls down the rebound as St. Anthony had left the line and gone back on defense. Lynch tries to lob it over the top. Nice move by Walker, but Lynch gets it back and finally pops it down. He now has six points. And this St. Anthony team stays focused. Bob Hurley won his 400th game the other day in the Miami term, as we said. And he didn't win 400 by easy enough as the season goes along. See now, St. Anthony wants to work the clock a little bit here with four minutes left, and they have a huge lead. Harris. In the walker, walker takes steps as he lifts the pivot foot. You know, Hurley 
has been playing basketball, and we'll talk about this when we come back, since he was 18 months old. Back <laughs> with more in just a moment, 56 to 37. Saint Anthony with the lead of oh, this young man, J.R. Reed at King Cotton 3 from Virginia Beach. Three games, 51 points, averaging 17, had 31 rebounds. Now does his work down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina for Dean Smith and the North Carolina Tar Heels. J.R. Reed, one of the best. Started some of it all here at the King Cotton Classic. Along with Derek Chivas, uh, did a few of his showboat moves, yeah. dunks uh, down here at the King Cotton Classic. As we said, Pat Anderson, Travis Creed, they should start a clinic for the colleges on how to invite great teams to a tournament. Of course, now all the classics all over the nation, you try to get together three fifths so you get two wins on your schedule. Here, Every team, Westwood, for instance, from Memphis, Tennessee, great ball club. Uh, the Kentucky team, Hopkins, North Hopkins, uh, you know, the, everyone that was here had a chance to win the tournament. No question, some of the best are here. Ron Ellis has played here before. You mentioned Derek Chivas. The turnaround by Lynch won't fall. Dennis Scott, who's playing at Georgia Tech. Harry Dozier, South Carolina. Lynch got up there, but they're going to score that one. Call it goaltending. I said 18 months for Bobby Hurley as he was. His father, when he first got this job, he came along and used to bring his young son to the game, stick him in the corner in a crib-like situation and give him a little basketball and say, go ahead and play. Have one of the assistant coaches or the trainer watch him. That's called being a coach's son. Steps are taken there and that's a turnover. And of course, he grew up watching some of the best. David Rivers played at St. Anthony. Kenny Smith played at St. Anthony. Great, so he, great work. tradition with that school with the radiator that holds down the basket. <laughs> they have a huge lead now. The Mathis Catholic St. Type program. Dunbar in Baltimore. Of course, Dunbar won the tournament the first two years, Coach Wade. Bob Wade, who's now the head coach at the University of Maryland. Brought his team up here two years straight and won. Reaching in there is Childress. Trying to strip the ball loose, well protected by Hurley. John, it's a thing of coaching now. What do you do to try to get back in the ball game? It's almost boring, but you know, there's nothing really Stu Fetter can do at this point if he presses zone press or anything like that. Uh, that'll open the door for layups. It will create more tempo, but uh, I think the end will even look better than they, you know, they really. Uh, are looking at this point if they uh, try to zone trap or anything. So you kind of just sit back like the other seven teams that have played St. Anthony this year and uh, take it on the chin. We've talked about Lynch and how he's been struggling today. He's averaging 17 a point in this tournament. But what about Bobby Graves? He averages 13 and he hasn't scored yet tonight. No, they defensively, they just put a ring around Lynch and Graves. And that was Graves with the bomb from way outside. Bobby Hurley has yet to miss from the line. Is there anything this youngster doesn't do well? Well, they were looking forward to this game. They really were. They uh, uh, had a great deal of confidence. And Flynn Hill, you know, they're the three cut defending champs in the tournament. The crowd here in Pine Bluff likes Flynn Hill because they have been here four years in a row. So uh, they had a lot going for them. But I think St. Anthony is just it has a great deal of confidence coming into this game. You notice each time that Coach Hurley isn't bringing any of his players up to the line, there's not much room for the big lead, just drop them back on defense. Sean Rooney hits the first. The I don't know if one one. I would like this year's seniors or last year. Kenny Anderson, Jimmy Jackson, Doug Edwards, Deion Thomas from Chicago, Alan Houston from Ballard, Bain. This last year was Billy Owens, Alonzo Mourning, LaFonce Ellis, Chris Jackson, Don McLean. That'd be a great all-star game. Hurley steals it and goes in and has the layup and the nice roll. He can dunk the basketball now. With both hands, they say. Now, they list him at six feet, but I still say he looks close to the 5'11". Banging that one down is Randolph Children. Plus, it's tough for Flint Hill. To They're so disciplined on offense, they don't want to take a bad shot, even with two minutes to go and 24 down. When you get the hands of Bobby Hurley on the ball, the only way you're going to get it away from him practically is to foul him. Walker. Oh, 
Walker dishes it back to be here. And without any problem, they can run the clock here, John, and not take another shot if they're not fouled. We're under two minutes right now. Harris falling, gets it over to here. I think the fat lady has started. She's at least tuning up those vocal cords. <laughs> Hurley to De here. De here takes it down the middle, dishes it off to Walker, who wasn't expecting the pass. Back out to Hurley. Walker on a baseline. Clint Hill's got to think about stopping the clock and fouling somebody. No, they're it, down big, but it'll even be bigger if they do that. <laughs> <laughs> this team is uh, well coached. They're putting on a clinic right now. They've been holding the ball for just about a minute. And no shot clock. They can hold it as long as they want. Finally stripped loose in quick hands. Malloy won't play them in New York. Tolentine will. I don't know if I'd really want to play St. Anthony's this year. I'll tell you, this year might not be the year. Wait till some of these guys graduate. Aaron Bain does get the ball to drop, and he's fouled. St. Anthony's, uh, tough way to start the season. You have to know you have a great ball club to start out in the Florida shootout with some great teams down there. Miami, Doug Edwards, I believe the best big guy in the nation. There's Bob Hurley going out of the ball game. He deserves it. And if you'd watch him in practice with his father about a, an inch away from his chin the whole time, and there's the guy right there that I think probably MVP, Jerry Walker. Great defensive job tonight, great offensive job. In high school basketball, you have to have a great rebounder, but you have to have a great point guard more than that. Jerry Walker and Bobby Hurley come out of the game. Darren Savino and Woodrow Williams come in for St. Anthony. Into the game for Flint Hill is the little guy who stands at only five foot five, number 25, Jermaine Brown, who's a freshman. But he's very talented this guy. Wouldn't it be something if we could get Hurley and Kenny Anderson on the same court? Oh, yeah. Now, we will in the future. Georgia Tech and Duke will be going at each other for a lot of years, so we'll see that matchup. One basketball isn't enough, correct? So I'll tell you. Childress puts up the three-pointer, but it's long. Turnaround shot by Bertino with one hand. It won't fall. Lynch follows. He finally puts the ball in the hole. It's just been one of those days. For Mr. Lynch. And with Dehart in the ball game, they, they're not going to take the ball away. So Pierce just works it around, gets it to work. Keith dumps it off. Darren Savino is checked and can't get it to go. Aaron Bain in. One. And that's the type of night it's been for Flint Hill when Aaron Bain misses a layup. This club will come back. Two seconds left. The game is over. And the St. Anthony Friars have broken the string of three wins by Flint Hill. And I think we can truthfully say that may be the number one team of this year in the nation. It's going to have to be a very, very good home court that beats St. Anthony. They don't play on their own court, so they'll, they'll give a lot of teams a chance the rest of the year. But I think right now we've watched the 1988-89 national champ. 64 to 45 is the final. As number one is handled number two very easily. Back with more in just a moment. Bobby Hurley, he's your most valuable player from the spot. 45 as number one has taken on number two, taken on the challenge, and taken it on very handily and won. Take a look at your all-tournament team. Dan Mason of Los Angeles, Westchester. He'll be going to UCLA next year. Travis Ford, he'll be doing his work for Missouri. Madisonville, North Hopkins. George Lynch of Flint Hill, who didn't have a great game here tonight, but is a tremendous player, as is Aaron Bain of Flint Hill, and Jerry Walker of St. Anthony. And Bobby Hurley of St. Anthony is the most valuable player right now for the presentation of the trophy. Let's go to Tim Munn. Once again, we thank you for your participation 
in King Cotton Six. And now, the crowning of our runner-up and champion presenting the awards will be Mr. Eddie Benson, Chairman of the Awards Committee, and Mr. Clarence Perkins, your tournament director. For the runner-up team and former three-time champion Flint Hill, the runner-up trophy, would you please come and pick it up? It's got to be Bill Falcons coached by them to come out and take that trophy. Well, they, they're so used to coming out for the championship trophy, and uh, I think, John, more than anything else, they're embarrassed. You know, they're an outstanding team. They've been national champs twice in the last eight years, and they lose this ball game by 20 points. Uh, Mr. Bobby Hurley, Singer. Your new champions, the St. Anthony Friars. remember them playing a bad game or a bad quarter. No, they haven't played a bad game. They will not beat themselves. If you're going to beat St. Anthony, you're the, going to be half the ones who go out and do it as they win this one, going away 64-45. When we return, we'll talk to the new champions and last year's champions as well. Stay with us.